Good afternoon, everyone. My profuse apologies. I caused a serious problem on the laptop, a technical problem. Uh, we didn't think Therese is not with me and she was not near her computer, so we weren't sure whether we could fix it. But as God would allow it, Therese was able to guide me on a, on a telephone call and I managed to get back online. My apologies to everybody who missed out or who went away, but we can now continue to pray that three o'clock chaplet. Let us thank God that we are able to do it and let us ask the Lord for the grace to pray this time, to spend this time in prayer in the way that we ought to do it so that our prayers will produce results. Results of honouring the Lord's desire for us to pray at this time and the results of receiving the petitions and the graces we ask the Lord for. Because he said, bring to me whatever your intentions are, I will grant them at this time. It is the greatest hour of mercy for the whole world. With that, my friends, let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, if you could kindly see me, could you kindly give me a thumbs up, please, so that I know that I can be seen and I can be heard. I would be grateful if you could kindly give me a thumbs up so that I know I know that uh, I am visible. Presuming you can you can see me and hear me, I will continue. Let us begin with the three o'clock prayer. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Thank you, Stella. Let us pray the three o'clock prayer. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gush forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, O unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. My dear friends, let us look at the diary note for the day. St. Faustina noted, Jesus, when I myself cannot sing you the hymn of love, I admire the singing of the seraphim. They who are so dearly loved by you, I desire to drown myself in you as they do. Nothing will stem such love, for no might has power over it. I seem to have done something to, something to the diary note. There's another part to it. I can't get to it for some reason. But let us reflect on this part of this note for the time being. St. Faustina wants to sing to Jesus, but she can't. But she, I'm sure, in her spiritual state, could hear the angels sing, Seraphim are angels, angels who are worshipping God day and night unceasingly. 
and Jesus said to pray the chaplet unceasingly. We ought to have an attitude of gratitude unceasingly, whatever happens around us. So my friends, let us ask the Lord to give us that gift of an attitude of gratitude. Just as much as we have challenges, there are also so many blessings, countless blessings that we are experiencing, most of which we do not even know of. The Lord is blessing us so much we don't even know. The each next breath we take is a blessing from God. We got up this morning because it is a blessing from God. We have another day to prepare ourselves to be with Him for eternity. We have been given, we, we got up this, I apologize, we got up into this day, we woke up into this day, the sun was shining, birds were chirping, we could breathe the air, and we just woke up into the day. There was nothing we could have done yesterday to have today in our life. Today is a gift for which we ought to be gratitude, grateful to God. When we begin from that point, we will see so many things we have to be grateful to Him for. So many things. And we also know the challenges we have have been sent to us for some reason we may not know of. But they have come to us because God has allowed them to be in our lives. And God never allows a challenge to come to us unless He is going to use that challenge to lead us to a better position, to bring us to some good, make us change the path so that we will realign ourselves along the perfect divine path God has designed for us. With that, my friends, let us pray, asking the Lord to give us that gift of an attitude of gratitude in every moment of our lives. The moment we feel frustrated, we have we get curseful thoughts come to our minds, let us immediately check ourselves and return to an attitude of gratitude. When we do that, we'll find more opportunities open up, more joy comes into our heart, greater contentment comes into our heart, we become more pleasant to the people around us. Our disposition become friendly, loving and pleasant to be with. And we become influencers of God's love, God's message, God's peace among those whom we are sent to encounter. And the blessings that flow to us from that most of which we don't even see because blessings come as good themselves, as blessings themselves, but blessings also come as bad avoided. We only know the things that happen. We don't know how many things were avoided. How many things the loving, merciful hand of God avoided hitting us, avoided from hitting us. So let us be thankful to God and get return to pray in the chaplet, the chaplet of divine mercy, which Jesus revealed to St. Faustina. She heard the words in her soul. She heard the words and what happened was she saw a vision of an angel about to strike the earth because God's anger was overflowing for the sinful way the world has been living. And the moment she saw that vision, in her vision she asked the angel, please hold back for a second. Give me a moment, please hold back for a second. And then she was brought before the most holy throne of God in her vision. And when she stood there, she couldn't plead the repeat the pleading that she made to the angel to hold back 
any more before God. She was just there standing before God. And then she heard an interior voice with the words of the chaplet to pray by virtue of the suffering and death of Jesus. As she began to pray, the God's wrath reduced, decreased, and the angel ceased from attacking, striking the earth. Next morning when she woke up, she had greater clarity about the prayer and she wrote it down. And Jesus told her, Say the prayer I taught you unceasingly. There is nothing you cannot obtain by praying it. Remember these words, my friend, about the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. There is nothing you cannot obtain by praying the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. But we ought to pray it from sincerely from the very bottom of our heart. When we pray for the whole world, have mercy on us and on the whole world. We ought to mean that sincerely for the whole world. And all that prayer we say for the whole world will come back to us reverberating with a snowball defect. And let us return to pray the Divine Mercy prayers. And we pray, Jesus, I trust in you. And let us begin. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was, con who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, let us pray this together. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, the soul and the divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Before we pray the first Thank you so much for all the thumbs up for me to know that I can be heard and seen. Let me say hello to everyone. Some of you left, I think, when I had a technical problem. I apologize to every one of them. Hello, Monica. Very welcome. Shalom. Good afternoon to you. Hello, Alicia. Nice to see you after some time. And God bless you. Good afternoon. Let us pray for your intentions. Let us pray for Elisha's intentions. Jesus, I trust in you. I agree. I fully agree with you that Jesus, I trust in you, is the way forward. Yes, let us ask St. Stanislaus to pray for us. Yes, St. Faustina too and St. Joseph too. Hello, Elsa. Thank you for the beautiful verse again. 
whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God, God remains in him. Remember that. Let us claim the blessings. Let us be with, be with the Son of God. Hello Elizabeth, very welcome. Blessed afternoon to you and your family. Let us ask for God's mercy upon all of us. Hello Everly, good afternoon or good morning to you and good morning to you too. Hello Roseman, very nice to see you. Hello Helena, God bless you and your family. Hello Serene, yes, blessings to you and your family too. Hello Linda, nice to see you. Blessings again. Blessings to you and your family. God's blessings. Hello Annie Shim. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and may God bless you all. Bless, bless you and your family. Hello Helene. Yes, welcome back to all whom we haven't seen yes for a while. For whatever the reason. And May God bless every one of us. Hello, Veera. Nice to see you. Hello, Swi. Pleasant day to you too. May God bless you. Hello, Margaret. God bless you and your family. Very nice to have you with us. Yes, let us, let's, let's all of us be prayer warriors for all those who are unable to pray for themselves. Yes. Hello, Cherry Paul. Blessed Thursday to you. God bless you. Hello Helene. Yes, we were we were stuck but God helped us to come back online again. Yes, Monica, thank you. Let us pray for friend Sonia who will be going for annulment proceedings tomorrow. Let us pray. Yes. Yes, it is sad that a marriage is breaking up. Let us hope and pray that she receives the annulment from the church. Dear prayer family, we are extremely sorry that, yes, yes, I understand that message. Hello, Tanya. Very nice to see you. Let us pray for all of Tanya's intentions. She's a prayer warrior for all those who know her. Hello, Helene. Yes, I said hello. Hello, Stella. Very nice to see you. Very nice to see you. I think I said hello to Vera. I said hello to Sir Margaret. I said hello. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Hello, Mary Stewart. No, I think everything is working again. Uh, hello, Said. Jesus, I trust in you. Trust in you too. Fully agree. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let us continue with the first decade. And in this decade, let us pray to the Lord to hear every one of our intentions. Jesus, you asked us to place all our intentions at your feet at this hour and place them in trust, in total trust in your mercy. Give us the grace to trust in you more and more and look to you and no other when things are good in our lives, when we are happy in our lives, and when we have occasion to be sad and feel challenged, you are always our saviour. You are the saviour in the mountain, on top of the mountain, and in the valley. We love you. Please hear our prayer. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and the divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Let us pray the second decade. In this decade, let us pray for all, the, all those who are unwell, every single person who need healing mercies from the Lord. Let us pray for everyone, everyone we know of, everyone we don't even know of, everyone the good Lord has appointed for us to pray for. Thank you, Gisel. Thank you, Gisel Marie. And thank you, Saeed. Let us pray for Saeed's sister, Niobe. Let us ask her. Let us ask the Lord's healing mercies upon Saeed's sister. There's nothing impossible for him. He healed so many while he was on this earth, and he continues to heal people today. Let us cry out to the Lord to have mercy upon Saeed's sister and every other person who is unwell. Teresa's parents are unwell. We know Yamuni and Sunet, they both need God's mercy and healing. And there are many others that you may have mentioned that I missed, I apologize. And those we haven't mentioned, but who need us to be prayer warriors for them, as Stella said. We are prayer warriors. I think as uh, Margaret said, let us be prayer warriors for everyone and let us pray for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Let us pray the third decade for all the souls who have recently died and who are in purgatory. For our parents, in-laws, children, grandchildren, grandparents, friends, everyone that we want to specifically pray for 
let us bring their names to the forefront of our minds. And let us also pray for every single soul that can benefit from the merits of our prayers at this moment. Every single one of them. So that by the merits of our prayer, may the good Lord either release as many of them as possible from the purgatory or reduce their time in purgatory significantly. And with that let us pray for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and the divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Fourth Decade Let us pray this decade for all the souls who are dying anywhere on this earth at this time, dying from whatever cause, dying under any set of circumstances. Let us call upon the Lord. Let us invoke the Lord's promise he made to St. Faustina. That if a chaplet is prayed by the dying side of some anyone, he would go to that person as that soul's merciful advocate and not as that soul's just judge. My dear friends, let us ask the Lord to Go to each such person who is dying anywhere on this earth at this moment. And also go to each person, who, each and every person who will die between now and until we pray the chaplet at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And not only to go to each such soul, but also to grant them the grace to receive him as that soul's merciful advocate, so that no soul would be lost. So that every soul dying now and who will die between now and until we pray the chaplet tomorrow will have the grace and the mercy and the opportunity to be saved. With that let us pray and let us particularly pray for our own family, own family members. I remember Delia's husband, John. Let us pray for Elsa's husband. And let us pray for uh, Margaret's father-in-law and mother-in-law. And let us pray for... I'm praying for those... Uh, Lindsay's, husband, Lindsay's father. And let us pray for... I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying... For everyone that I recall, if I don't recall someone, I apologize. But let us remember our own dear ones, own dear loving family members who have gone before us. Let us pray for them all. Because every soul we help come out of purgatory, 
will enter heaven and will pray for you and me and for everyone else for the rest of our lives. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and the divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Let us pray the fifth decade for all of our intentions once again. And let us particularly remember Orchida's daughter for her to get a good job, good, good employment opportunity. And let us pray for her. Thank you, Roslyn. Very nice to see you again. God bless you. God bless you. God bless everyone. Let us bring every one of our intentions that we brought before the Lord at the beginning. Let us remind ourselves and remind the Lord about them. He knows what we need and He knows what we want. And let us place them all at His feet, at the feet of His mercy. Let us ask Him to accept them, transform them into intentions that are in line with His most holy will and to grant them to us and to give us the grace to be vigilant to recognize the new opportunities that is sending to us in response to the prayer intentions we make to him so that we will not remain fixated on the closed door but recognize the other doors that are being opened to us by the mercy of the Lord and let us pray let us pray for Syed's son as well for him to get well, may the Lord send out, send down his healing mercies upon him. And let us pray, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Let us pray, Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Let us pray together. O Holy and Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us so that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Let us pray together. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Saint Faustina, Apostle of Divine Mercy, pray for us. Saint Pope John Paul, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Mother of Mercy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, bear with me for a second, please. By way of a very short testimony, my friends, I have so many, my wife and I can share hundreds and thousands of personal testimonies of praying the Divine Mercy, asking for God's mercy and solutions to our situations, our challenges manifesting. That there are yet some challenges we have been praying for the last so many years, solutions haven't come yet. But we know that in the Lord's time they will come. I have shared with you before I have shared this testimony before. I used to work in an office where I used to, my job was to review matters, customer requests that have been declined. And my job was to do the final review on behalf of the CEO of the company before the customer is told, no, we are not going to resolve your problem you can take it to the lawyers or to the courts. There were three of us in my team where we looked at these matters and every single next file before I took another file, I prayed which one I am, I, am I supposed to take. I took the next file in prayer and before I opened the file, I asked the Lord, what is it you want me to do? Because at the other end of this file, there is a family or an individual or a small business that is suffering because something that they have asked for, something that they believe is rightfully theirs, have been refused. They are in dire difficulty, some of them risking bankruptcy. And I would pray, the, pray to the Lord and ask, Lord, what is it you want me to do? Nine out of ten times the Lord would tell me, pay it. Approve it. Approve the request. So I read through the file trying to find a way to approve the request, but I can't find a way sometimes. Often I find the way, but sometimes I, find I can't find a way. When that happens, I take a piece of paper, mark five ticks across and ten ticks down, 
and to each coordinate I pray using that as a rosary I pray a chaplet over the file keeping that piece of paper on the file of course for all intentions and purposes I'm working I'm at the desk I'm looking at a file but I am praying under my breath almost every time I finished praying and I look at the file my eye goes to information sometimes in two places sometimes in three places combined together it is a perfect argument why the customer's request should be granted so I write a brief memo to the last manager who referred it to me say for these these reasons I believe this should be this should be granted and these some of them have worked for 20 years 30 years in their jobs there are occasions people call me these managers call me and say Dan I have done this job for 30 years but I have never come across that argument you have put up but I have to agree with you we must grant this request and customers request gets resolved there are others who call me and tell me look I have done this job for the last 20 25 years but I never looked at that request in the way you have looked at it and I have to agree with you that it must be granted and people's problem got problems get resolved the Lord used me as his hands and eyes to 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 distribute his merciful solutions to his people if ever I picked up a file without praying I couldn't get rid of it it would cause all kinds of problems to me I have shared this with people I must also sh I share this in a prayer group like yours and in that prayer group was a PhD student trying to write a dissertation her thesis she had been struggling with some data to find some insights she said when I when I heard you say that Dan I thought you are nuts I thought Dan you are in cuckoo's land but she went home two or three days later she was struggling with the data set of data to find some insights and she recalled what I said so she took her rosary and prayed a chaplet of the divine mercy over the data she said Dan just as you said my eye went to various places and I saw some deep beautiful insights into the set of data and she wrote a draft paper took it to a supervisor at the university the supervisor looked at it and said wow where did you get this from this is fantastic and she said I had to acknowledge I prayed and Jesus showed them to me so in her thesis at first at the beginning she acknowledges Jesus for giving her the insights to write that paper my dear friends in everything the same thing can happen in your life and in my life all we need is to pray to the Lord cry out to the Lord in trust and pray the chaplet Jesus said pray the chaplet unceasingly when we are traveling in a bus or a train or a plane when we are lying on bed when we are doing something we can always pray the chaplet of the divine mercy it is a prayer to be prayed unceasingly and it produces results because Jesus said there is nothing you cannot obtain by praying the chaplet they are not my words they are his words because they are his words they are true that is true so with that I will stop my friends I'm sorry about the hassle at the beginning I I got the computer into a very very difficult situation I deleted a drive by accident and I couldn't reinstate it but by the grace of God Therese managed to call me on the phone she did something and she asked me to do something and it is working thank you Therese for helping and thank you Emmanuel too and thank you everyone for being patient with us may God bless you may God grant all that you asked him for may he provide for you protect you prosper you give you good health and fulfill all your heart's desires 
that are in line with his most holy will. God bless you, my friends. God bless you. See you this evening or tomorrow afternoon again. But let us remember to ask and pray for an attitude of gratitude. Pray the chaplet as often as we can and have an attitude of gratitude irrespective of who says what, what happens in front of us. We remain grateful to God for his mercy in our lives. Thank you, my friends. Take care. God bless you. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. We pray life every single day. So join us again tomorrow. God, God bless, bless you and, and your families. families.